Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So a few days ago, I did a video titled Mac OS Phones Home Previewing Local Image Files with iCloud and Adalinux Turned Off. Why? And I read from an interesting blog from Jeffrey Paul where he went over every time he was opening image files, Media Analysis D would open and try to connect to Apple servers, which was a problem for obvious reasons to many people. Now, I wanted to read a couple of follow-ups to this, and I also wanted to read some of the comments from the individual who sent me the article. This comes from Misk on Twitter, who is really cool. I will link you down below. No, Mac OS doesn't send info about your local photos to Apple. We analyzed Media Analysis D after an extraordinary claim by Jeffrey Paul that it scans local photos and secretly sends the results to an Apple server. The process indeed scans local photos, as its name suggests. Media Analysis D starts every time you preview an image file in Finder, then calls an Apple service. The process does not access any suspicious resources. Here is a look at the resources which he provides. The content of its framework, medianalysis.framework, clearly shows that this process runs machine learning algorithms to detect objects and photos. Its binaries files show a huge list of objects the model is trained to detect, and he provides some samples. It also makes object-based search possible in photos. When you search for a car in photos, the results are shown based on the scans run by Media Analysis D. It flags old photos that contain cars. It also helps Finder to detect if a photo has text, QR codes, etc. So even if you don't use photos, the process will run. Also, a Mac needs to call Apple services even if you don't have an iCloud account. For example, a Mac needs to check for the latest Mac OS update. Okay, so why does Media Analysis D send data to Apple? We analyze the network traffic sent and received by Media Analysis D. Well, the call is literally empty. We decrypted it. No headers, no IDs, nothing. Just a simple get request of this endpoint that returns nothing. Honestly, it looks like a bug, and he provides a summary of the call. Moreover, the data shown by Activity Monitor about this process is merely the data needed to establish an HTTPS channel with the server. If you copy the URL of the service and paste it in a browser, you get the same number of bytes sent and received, and he shows Wireshark traffic. Conclusion, Media Analysis D doesn't send any info to Apple or any data to Apple about your local photos. The network call is clearly a bug, or Apple has disabled the feature remotely, which is very unlikely. We tested on Mac OS 13.1 and with and without iCloud. Thank you for reaching this far. We hope that you found this content useful, and uh, I will leave a link to it down below. And then he confirms that this was fixed in Mac OS 13.2, so it was doing it in 13.1, and it does it in 13.2. That is much better. Yes, if I would be concerned if I had all of these things turned off, and literally the moment that I opened an image, something called Media Analysis D is phoning home to the company that created the operating system. I can understand why this is something that would freak people out, I could understand why Jeffrey Paul would be freaked out by that. And that is also one of the reasons that I particularly prefer using an open source operating system so that it is easier to get to the bottom of why something like this is happening than you can with something that is more closed source. Now, there was an, another article that I wanted to go over that I thought was very, very well written. Again, to be clear, the, the writer of the article does not appear to be a fan of this YouTube channel, which is very, made very obvious in the comments, but I thought that there was some really good analysis in it, so I thought it would most certainly be worth reading, and I will link to it down below because I think it has some very good quality analysis. And I'd also like to read this. I'd honestly like to have a discussion about this one particular article with somebody who is an expert in this field who would be able to really go through it with me in a much nicer fashion. Unfortunately, this that, that person's employer does not want them to show up on this channel, which I think is particularly sad because if that person's employer allowed him on this channel, it would demonstrate to this entire audience that that person's employer seems to value the opinions and work of somebody that genuinely cares about privacy, which would, I think, reflect really well. Uh, unfortunately, that they, they, they don't. They don't see it that way. So such is life. So I'm going to read some of this article, and then I am going to read his comments to the article so that you can slightly tweak so that his employer doesn't wind up figuring out who he is and shit canning him so that you can understand uh, both sides of this particular issue. But this would be really much more fun if it was able to be done as a live inter a live discussion, but such is life. So this is from a blog called eclecticlight.co, and I would like to read this first. It says, is Apple checking images we view in the Finder? Ever since Apple was unwise enough to suggest that it may check certain images to see whether they were CSAM, rumors have been rife that it has pressed ahead and now does that. I gather a new claim is being pushed out that this is performed in Ventura 13.1. So this article is an attempt to determine whether there's any truth in that. This claim boils down to Apple automatically being sent identifiers of images that a user has simply browsed in the Finder, without that user's consent or awareness. I should make it clear that this hasn't been demonstrated. As far as I'm aware, the only evidence provided is that a Mac on which the images were being browsed in the Finder tried to make an outgoing connection from Media Analysis Daemon to an Apple server at the time, as revealed by the software Firewall Little Smith. 
image. When Apple was intending to check for CSAM, it kindly explained how it aimed to do that by generating identifiers known as neural hashes for images. Moment's thought should indicate that uploading every image is neither sensible nor practical. Instead, some form of concise identifier is essential. Unlike normal hashes, which are intended to amplify the smallest change in the source file, neural hashes are intended to distinguish images according to their content and characteristics. Not only did Apple explain the principles of its intended detection system, but it gave us a free demonstration of those in Mac OS Monterey with Visual Lookup VLU. This enables your Mac, with a little help from Apple servers, to match neural hashes, to identify paintings, breeds of dog and cat, and sun-dry other subjects and images. I have taken a deep look at the processes involved in VLU to the point where one of my free apps, Mince, can easily obtain a full account of them from the unified log, and I'll leave a link to this Mince app down below. I therefore performed a series of tests in Mac OS 13.1 virtual machine running in Viable on my Mac Studio M1 Max to discover what might explain the observation reported and whether that supported the claim being made. To get an idea of whether Media Analysis D or any other component involved in an image analysis or normal hash generation was active when looking through images in a gallery window in the Finder, I loaded 18 assorted images in different formats into the Documents folder of my virtual machine, opened a gallery view of them, and looked through them for a period of one minute. I then captured all log entries for that period, a total of more than 40,000, and saved that excerpt to a file using Yulblow. Not only were there no evidence of any image analysis taking place, but in that period there were no log entries for Media Analysis D at all, not one. I repeated this over a period of 30 seconds, this time using mints to display all log entries associated with VLU and live text. There were none at all in that period. Although I studied VLU and live text in detail in Monterey, before going any further, I wanted to confirm that they behave similarly in Mac OS 13.1 and write similar sequences of messages in the log. I therefore obtained a log extract using mints for a single image VLU using preview. This confirmed that messages and processes appear very similar to those I had analyzed before. These are summarized in the following diagram. So here it says Safari browser control click or preview photos open image, check language and country, if supported, offer lookup Safari, offer info, preview and photos. Visual lookup, after that, vision kit analyzer process to MAD parse to on demand image processing, document recognition, visual search gating task, or which will then go to look for other factors in treatment, perform course classification, object detection, annotation extraction, analysis complete white dots displayed, white dot clicked or automatic, vision kit, MAD, visual search, search, E2E, knowledge search dot art, Pegasus kit, search query, and then media analysis, D, TLS 1.3, on port 443 to Apple servers. At the end of it, he says, note that media analysis, D, doesn't contact Apple servers until late in the process to perform matching of the neural hashes generated by the preceding image analysis. The response from those servers then enables VLU results to be displayed in a window over the image. Quick look preview. Although the original description was finder browsing, for some of that might include the display of images as quick look previews by selecting the image and pressing the spacebar. In my previous examination of VLU and live text, this wasn't a feature that I had investigated. I therefore obtained log excerpts for two images being opened in quick look preview. One of those images contained some handwritten text, the other did not. For both images, VisionKit initiated image analysis when the image was being opened in its preview window. For the image which didn't contain text, this completed in a total processing time of 615 milliseconds, failed to recover any text from that image, and attempted no remote connections. The image containing text took longer, 881 milliseconds, and returned text of length 65dd as given in the log after a considerably more elaborate series of processes, including one outgoing secure TCP or quick connection by Media Analysis D, lasting 58 milliseconds, before the completion of visual search gating. This is consistent with the briefer task used in live text, and quite different from VLU. There is thus no evidence of the generation of neural hashes or any search query by Pegasus Kit typical of the later stages of VLU. Conclusions, the most important part, there is no evidence that local images in a Mac have identifiers computed and uploaded to Apple servers when viewed in Finder windows. Local images that are viewed in Quick Look Preview undergo normal analysis for live text and text recognition where possible, but that doesn't generate identifiers that could be uploaded to Apple servers. Images viewed in app supporting VLU have neural hashes computed, and those are uploaded to Apple servers to perform lookup and return its results to the user, as previously detailed. VLU can be disabled by disabling Siri suggestions and system settings, Siri and Spotlight, as previously explained. Users who want to block all such external media analysis dlookups can do so by using a software firewall to block all outgoing connections to Apple servers that process through port 443. That may very well disable other macOS features. Trying to harvest VLU neural hashes to detect CSAM would be doomed to failure for many reasons, most of which were raised with Apple at the time of its original proposals and remain valid today. 
and alleging that a user's actions result in controversial effects requires demonstration of the full chain of causation, basing claims on the interference that the two events might be connected without understanding the nature of either is reckless, if not malicious, and in the interest of fairness here, uh, just, yes, he he thinks I'm a jerk, which is, which is fine. I'm, you know, I, I grew up in New York City. It's, uh, not going to deny that. So what I wanted to do here is I wanted to discuss some of my friend's comments on some of the comments in this article, since he is not able to show up on my channel for an interview because of his employer. So he says, there is a fundamental flaw in this guy's approach, which is actually pointed out by the comment by CV on January 18th at 6.06 p.m. You would need access to the source code to verify this. The encryption isn't that important, actually. This guy rebuts to this by saying, oh, well, they'd have to hide all the log traffic that would result, and I didn't see any. But that's kind of the point. They're relying on Apple building the system in such a way that they use the normal logging functionality, and it's very plausible that they wouldn't do this. The right methodology to figure this out is to perform static analysis on the code, but you can't do that. You have to rely on the logging stack because Apple blocks access to these underlying functions. And if they decided to tell their developers, hey, anything related to that CSAM detection shouldn't get logged, it would require no special technical mechanism to prevent that, and there'd be no way to find out that such a mechanism exists. Now, it seems implausible that they do this, but they already have a strike against them in the first place when it was found out that the neural hash infrastructure they had been planning to use in the first place was already found in previous of the releases of iOS prior to the one that was supposed to have introduced it. It's easy to dismiss that, but when you have no way to look inside the black box and are relying on the signals it tells you, why would you trust those signals to tell you the complete story when at a higher level, Apple deliberately has been caught out in not telling you the full story? What we're left with is, trust me, bro, I checked one of the most likely places Apple would have showed evidence of something like this, and I didn't find any. With a flawed approach that also didn't even consider that they might buffer this traffic and send it at a later time as opposed to instantly. This is why a static analysis of the code is necessary but impossible, and this approach doesn't rise to that level of evidence. It's only good enough for this guy to say, I don't think they do it, I can't disprove it, but I couldn't find evidence that they do. Sorry, I know that was kind of a rant, but the TLDR is this guy's approach can't make any definitive statements that aren't doing anything nefarious, and his explanation to justify that is sufficient to make a definitive statement is not grounded in reality. It provides inconclusive evidence suggesting that it might not happen, nothing more. I could go deeper into the comments dismissing the dissenters in this, but he's wrong in several of them, for instance. There was a long silence, and more recently, Apple has made a clear statement that it has not decided to pursue CSAM checking at all, but has introduced some other changes to help parents and children with safe messaging. Not unrelated, the mechanisms that underlie those safeguarding mechanisms share functionality with the CSAM detection, namely the content scanner that alerts parents if they detect potential not safe for work content in a text convo. How can this guy possibly say that this approach isn't related to the CSAM scanning when it literally relies the exact same mechanism. Other comment. There is nothing suspicious about this at all, and if you don't like your Mac connecting to Apple servers, then I suggest you try using Windows instead, and see where that gets you. By the way, are you aware that most non-Apple cloud services that support sharing of images have been scanning their content for years? No one seems to care about that, but it's well known and has resulted in several erroneous court cases that have been reported widely. Again, the whole reason why this is a problem is because Blackberry's meowing in the background of the video, but more importantly, because it brings... Uh, because it, it, now this is my friend's comment, because it breaks the contextual integrity of privacy in the cloud. Okay, that's just fuck it with me now. Because it breaks the contextual integrity of privacy in the cloud versus your own device. This is hand-waving to say, well, just use Windows, because the whole reason that this is an egregious violation of privacy is you can't effing turn it off, especially egregious if it's happening surreptitiously in the background, but equally egregious if they tell you that they're doing it and your only recourse is to use another operating system. The lunging lounger guy has a pretty good take. They nailed the point on waiting for longer to see if the findings are transmitted to Apple after longer than the duration of their limited test. In other words, your evidence works against you in this line of reasoning. In other words, you simply do not get what people are concerned about. You are therefore not someone we can trust to perform the analysis or to report on its significance. Excellent quote. This is the key point. Lunging Lounger nails this on all points. That's one of the commenters on that particular article. I think they may not be aware of or understand the nuance I mentioned about static analysis, but that's kind of too deep in the weeds. Their comment gets the main point across that boils down why this analysis is flawed and why it's not histrionics. The original post's privacy threat model is way too weak, and there are inconsistencies in the original post's conclusion based on their findings. This post does not provide definitive evidence to refute anything. It just provides inclusive analysis and inaccurate analysis. This would have been much more fun to have as a conversation, and I really wish I could have had it as a conversation, but I can't because his employer is an asshole and won't let him come on my YouTube channel. But this, you know, maybe they'll change their mind at some point because I genuinely do believe if somebody who works at X company uh, explains all of this, it might actually demonstrate that X company cares about privacy and be a good thing. But 
they don't see it that way. I'm kind of curious what people in the comments think. Blackberry, if you want attention, come downstairs and sit on the chair. Otherwise, cut the shit. I, I, I don't know what to say. Like, Blackberry, come down here. Blackberry. 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 <laughs> she said. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.